All right, so today I'd like to talk to you about how to get your over-the-air channels with this HodgePodge uh, 850 device. Now you can get several of these devices um, online. This one is actually quite an old one. I've had it for a long time. Uh, simply this device here, it has the USB, uh, your coaxial input, it has a little indicator light to let you know that it's running. And it also has this input here for, um, you can plug in a little audio video uh, adapter so you can connect a VCR up to it. Um, and I, I've never used that and it didn't come with that but I did find one but it just I just never been able to get it to work properly. But that's not really a concern, I have other devices for that. So it does NTSC, ATSC, uh, Got it uh, as an open box on sale. Um, watch on your notebook or desktop PC. The thing I liked about this is it did have the, it was USB, so that made it a lot easier. It showed, reading some of the system requirements, uh, it says a 2.2 gigahertz Intium, Intel Pentium 4. Um, we will work for my, work with Microsoft Windows 7. Windows Vista XP service pa with service packs 2 also for the Windows Media Center it is it's a high speed USB 2 will not work with USB 1 you need at least 64 megabytes of of uh, of uh, graphics card and you need a sound card CD-ROM to software installation I'm going to do this in Linux so this, none of the software that came with this is going to really be uh, necessary this is the box the antenna came in. I've done a review previously on this antenna. So this is my aerial, my antenna that I use to receive the over-the-air channels. It is an Antenna Craft 360. It is a directional antenna so I can change the direction of it and get stations from different areas. It's actually quite handy if you have TV towers in different areas so you can aim your antenna to where you wanna, where you wanna put it. I've gotten QAM clear channels with this, but um, it, it's not actually made for cable. So uh, there's other devices, like a later version of this HodgePodge um, device does do the QAM. This one just doesn't do it, uh, but it does do the ATSC stuff. So I'll just um, show you how it works. And I'm gonna run it through a program called Caffeine uh, under Linux, and I'll show you how to set it up and get your channel scanned in and uh, use this as your over-the-air tuner and PVR and excess uh, and whatever you want else you want to want to do with it. So you get caffeine, you go in here, this is what the logo looks in, like. Uh, you install it on your system. And just have this up here. And you go here, you're greeted with this menu. You can play a file, play audio CD, uh, play a DVD. Digital TV is what I like. So make sure you have your device set up properly. I don't have this selected on this computer, so and it seems to be working. So and then I don't know if this is actually the front end of the device. When you do a scan, you use US ATSC center frequencies and ATSC. So. That's the settings you want to have there. Just pause the video and uh, if, if you want to compare it to your settings. Now, it's going to make this box a bit bigger. So it shows you the signal and the SNR. Um, it doesn't really show you the, the greatest, um, uh, it doesn't show you the greatest waveform length of your reception not in this program anyway I know there's probably programs out there that you can get that would do a better job at um, showing you uh, what it is and another thing I like about this too is he do it does put the channels in order uh, when you do a scan so Another thing I'd like to mention is today is a nice uh, spring day. So usually in the springtime, after we've gone through the harshest winters, um, the over the air channels, some of the weaker ones will come in and that won't come in at all in the winter time. So 
you want to keep that in mind when you're scanning for channels. So like say in the spring or on a hot day, you might get some really good atmospheric conditions to be able to get some DXing and get some channels from really far away, which is something I like to play around with. And this uh, tuner here, this uh, hodgepodge uh, device has a really good tuner on it. So I can get some um, channels from, from a real far distance away. So yeah, there's quite a few channels. Now, a bunch of these channels I'd like to point out is I'm getting two PBS towers. So PBS will have a, usually four channels within PBS. So there'll be PBS um, create, and then there'll be PBS um, world channel, and there'll be PBS kits. So, um, and also on this one, it has, instead of uh, First Nation experience, it has global on a different uh, on a different transmitter. So I'm, it seems like I'm getting most of the channels I can get on a good summer day today. So I can get like channel three, which is WSTM. So what I want to do is just highlight all this and add the filtered. There we go and go there. So now I can see all my channels um, through this list here and they're all lined up um, very well. So I'm just I'm gonna click on global. I'm getting global. Not global TV, but like uh, it's one of the PBS uh, muxes and it has NHK world. So you just double click on that and it will full screen it. It's kind of going a little bit slow and pixelated. It, this is actually, I've moved the antenna, so it's probably not positioned optimally to it. And also you can hit the F key in this program to full screen your, your video. So you don't have to look at all this, all this in the background. So I'm going to stop that because... Uh, just to show that it does work and uh, and that's how you scan in all your channels 29 channels that's why I scanned in this morning on my TV because I did a rescan on my TV as well so the nice thing is this program is you can manage your PVR stuff so if you want to PVR set recording times for different pro different shows you can do that and what I like about this program is you can pull up all the program guide information so it so it has it on in this nice little window with the description of the programs that you might want to watch. So I haven't really watched Cozy and Cozy Cozy in a while. So I, for example, I like Quantum Leap. So if I wanted to say, oh yeah, record show, I just go here, and I'd set it to record Quantum Leap at this time. Another thing is I go point out laugh. <laughs> Lauren laugh has here's the problem I find with laugh. I used to have a lot of more movies, but now they have like. Spin City, Grace Under Fire, Night Court, The Drew Carey Show, That 70s Show, Roseanne. It's like, I don't know. If you like these shows, great. I mean, I haven't been watching any of these shows, but now here I'll show you over on, I clicked on the kids. So you can get all the EPG information. Whoops, I just uh, For all the shows um, on PBS Kids, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood and Sesame Street and all that. So it shows you the times that they're going to come on 24-7. So if you want to watch Sesame Street uh, 1230, you can watch Sesame Street at, tw uh, at midnight, you know. Um, American Gladiators, The Avengers, On Charge. This is an interesting, interesting channel. I'll have to check that out. So yeah, this is uh, Caffeine. Works with uh, with that. So give it a check. Uh, check it out if you have a uh, tuner card. Different tuner cards only cost about... Um, I've seen some of them for like less than maybe a little bit more than $20, like some cheap ones that might work. I don't know if, if you've tried them, let me know in the comments. I just got this secondhand Win TV HodgePodge HVR device, which I've been using for over 10 years and it's served me well. And this is the, this can be a nice setup. If you have an old computer, you want to use it as your PVR and run it in the background. This can be a nice uh, alternative to reuse some old technology. Just install Linux Mint or Ubuntu on it and run Caffeine as a PVR. Just need a big enough hard drive to store the information and have some fun with, uh, with it as an over-the-air PVR.